Our Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity to expound your words, and in particular, to explain the reason for our hope. Tonight, as we study your word, again we seek for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, that our spiritual discernment may be sharp, and we may be spiritually nourished. Salamat amahan sa imong pagpakiguban ka namo karon. Among gipangayo ang katumanan sa imong saad nga ikaw ani as among taliwala, anas among makasingkasing, anas among mga panimalay o kun asa man dapit karon ang imong mga anak. Among giampo sa ngala ni Ginoong Hesus. Amen. Ang Seventh Day Adventist Church which is scattered in different parts of the world, more than 200 countries, about 218 countries, nagpahidangat nga na kaninyo sa panimbaya ni Ining Kagabhion. Atong ikatulo, karon nga episode sa atong The Reason for Our Hope. Na-explain ako sa inyo sa sinugdan nga gibasi na ito kining atong series karon sa text nga mabasa na ito sa uh, 1 Peter 3.15, diin si San Pedro nag-ingon, Kinahanglan andam kamu kanunay sa pagtubag sa mga tao na nagapangutan na kaninyo, kalabot sa paglaom nga naa kaninyo, apan buhatan ninyo kini, uban sa pagtahod, uban sa kalumo. Ang ginoo magpanalangin, samtang kita karon mag-discuss sa ikatulong nga objection kon accusation or label against the Seventh Day Adventist Church. And now we are going to explain to you the reason for our hope, part three. Akong gikutlo, kining uh, uh, objection. Gitawag kining objection number 101. Nga mabasa na to sa balasahon nga ad, uh, answers to objection, page 420. Ginaingon ni ining uh, passage, When SDA ministers or believers go into a community to hold a series of lectures, they conceal at the first their denominational connections. They thus hope to draw into their audience people who would never come if they knew that SDAs were conducting the meetings. This is a form of deception. There is something that matters with a religious body that is afraid to identify itself as soon as it begins to carry on any activity in a community. Na yun ang dumo nga, akong gipresent ka ninyo ang pila ka matawag natog accusations or objections being thrown upon the people who meet with you in this channel, who expounds God's words in this channel. They are a cult. We described that already and we have justified before you. We cannot accept because we are never a cult. We are a group of people who believes in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So we belong to all the others who believe in the merits of Christ's death on the cross. We are not a cult. Kagabi atong gi-expound. We are not legalists either. O sa muna sa ilang accusation nga, legalist kini mga tao na, ang ilang gi-pasantop ni ini nga, ang ang tao maluwas lamang kung magbantay sa kasuguan sa Diyos, in particular sa Sabbath, but we have expounded to you, we are not legalists either. We are putting the right place, we are putting the relationship of law and grace in the proper perspective according to the Bible. Tonight, atong i-discuss ka ng accusation nila, deceivers mo, dili mo gatug ag tinood. Gibasin ni nila mga kaigsoonan sa matod pa nila, kung mag-hold good mo mga meetings, Gamito ninyo ang lain-lain nga title, health approach, drug abuse, family life. Ya, dili mo gatugan nga ang inyo di ay exposition sa biblical doctrines. Well, we have to honestly tell you, wala mi galimod. Kay kanang mga butanga nga among ginagamit sa presentations, mao na ang gibati namo nga part sa ibang hilyo ang pag-improve sa matag pamilya, so family life lectures. Ang pagtagad sa mga ayong panlawa, so health lectures. We are not trying to cover our doctrinal teachings with these things because that's part of the doctrine that we teach. We are bringing into the world what we call the holistic message. Holistic. W-H-O-L-I-S-T. 
tibuok nga mensahe. Meaning, we are talking not just about spiritual matters or biblical doctrines, we are also talking about the teachings of the Bible regarding our need to guard our health, our need to preserve our families, our need to improve our life in society, our need to give attention to our minds. So, kana ng mga lectures, they are not done to cover up our doctrinal approach. Bisan sa among mga magasin, bisan sa among books, bisan sa bisan on sa program. In fact, sa amo ng schools, ginaimpasayas na mo ang integration of faith and learning. Sa unsang paagi nga, ang bisan unsa nga sanga sa pagtuon. Ang bisan unsa nga sanga sa akadim. Ma mathematics mana or ma physics mana, ma science mana, ma social, uh, social science man, ma zoology, man, any branch of knowledge. We integrate the biblical grounds for it. And you have noticed that. Bisan ka ng atong regular nga weekly program nga gingala na itong Partners or Ho- of Hope where we are presenting the government agency that renders service to the public. Atong gibrids ang ilang function from the biblical point of view. And that's not concealing our biblical teachings. That's what we teach. So, amo na nga vehemently deny. Is there truth in this accusation or objection against the SDA Church? Niya ang ikatubag namo. One of the most striking facts that stand out in the Gospels is that Christ concealed His identity on a number of occasions. Dili mong yung tinuod po nga nagatabon pero dunay gitawag tag preparatory nga panagana. Ang example na to anak sa Bible, si Jesus Christ Himself. When he was ministering din his kalibutan. And re- remember, Christ lived in this world for a very brief 31 years only. Ang narikod sa Bible, ang iyerang first 12 years, from the time he was born until the tw- time he was 12 years old when he had dialogue with the wise men or the leaders of the temple at the gates of the temple of Jerusalem. Bao na ang iyerang first 12 years. Apan ang kinabuhi ni Kristo na silent at 18 years, gikan sa 12 years old, hangtod sa time nga mi gawas siya gikan sa carpentry shop ni Joseph o mi adto sa kang John the Baptist to be baptized. O nahitabo na mga iksoon, 18 years later gikan sa iyang uh, pakidiscuss uh, o mga dagkong butang sa mga leaders sa temple. Dito sa Jerusalem katong gipangita siya sa parents si Joseph o si Mary. Apa ng iyang three and a half years ng pag-minister. Maura mag ang actual yang ministry. Because the rest of the years, he did not actually do. Katong gibadlong siya sa iyang inahan nga uh, nganong nawala, mangka nga wala ka na ng hidna mo. Apa naingon siya, ayaw ko ninyog pangita ah, because I have to be in the father's business. And he was. Apanayinom doon ito mga eksyon, when he began his ministry, may mga occasion nga, ang iyahang mga taong giayos sa sakit. Tagaan tamog sample, for example, when there was a blind, uh, a leper, rather, a leper, o saka taong uh, lipro san lahon. Huwag nahibaw tangan ni Aning Biblical Times, ang tanang san lahon, outcast na sila sa society. They do not, they are not allowed to live in the midst of the people. Ang ilang isolation, grabe kaayo. Dili to kay parehas sa atong quarantine lang ang muralag na aspikas kwarto. Di lang paduawon diri. No, sa ilang isolated you, doon nag-iyo'y leprosinter. Nada pa magani na sa atong panahon karon. Kay ang lipe, leprosy, hilabihan ka mananakod. Apan kining ang liper, when he encountered Christ, mihangyo siya ayuha ko, ginoo. And then, Jesus of course, brought healing upon the liper. Pero paminawan ninyo on sa iyang gisulti sa liper, Humania ayuha ang liper. Jesus said unto him, See, thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Giayo taka. So, paglakaw ni mo, ay panugilon sa mga tao kinsa nag-ayo ni mo. Meaning, he was trying to, wani, 
padayag nga nay nahinagbo na ko si Jesus Christ mo'y nag-ayo na ko giing na nino niya tell no man show thyself to the priest offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them mao na ang iyang case sa leper but there was another occasion katong duha kabuta nga mga tao nga pagkadungog nga naa si Kristo moabot misinggit sila kaniya Taga imi og pananaon ibalik ang among pananaon ang, ang narecord sa Matthew 9 verse 13 nagingon and their eyes were opened and Jesus is straightly charged them saying see that no man know it pagkaayo niya sa duha ka buta yang <laughs> giingnan panlakaw mo pero ay mo panugilon unsay nahitabo sa inyo grabe i mean Why will he hide the miracle that he has done? That's not the only occasion. Another occasion was when he was interviewing the disciples. Nakailamog kinsa ko. Sa may inyong ikasuti, may tungod na ko. Ay, uba nito ba? Ah, ang uba, nag-ingon nga ikaw kuno mao si Elijah. Ang uba, muni muna ang gisulti. Upon, when he turned to Peter, niyong siya, Peter, ikaw, kinsa may ikasulti ni mo, kinsa man ko. And Peter told him, Lord, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Apan sa diyang giribilo ni ang iyang kaugalingon, in equivocally, right there, before the disciples, matod pa niya nga ito kanila, Matthew, but Matthew uh, 16, verse 30, Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Nga no man na. Nganong dili man niya ipadalag hinuo ng iyang kaugalingon, nganong dili man niya openly reveal ang iyang kaugalingon because he came here for that purpose, to tell the people that he is the Messiah, he is the Savior of mankind. Arang-arang pagani si igagaw, igtagurahan niya si John. Kaya katong pagduol ni John, uh, ni Jesus kang John sa pagpaingon niya sa suba aron mabautismuhan, layo pa si Jesus, gitudlo na ni John. Behold! The Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. There was already that kind of public identification as who the man is. Ni anang panahon na, but there are number of occasions nga makita na to mga higala nga. Jesus was trying to show the people nga dili niya gusto nga magubot ang mga tao sa dihang mahaduol siya. Munang ingon siya, ayaw mo panugilun kinsa ko. Si Adam Clark o sa ka Rather, ni ay, ni ay assessment ni nga. We have yet to hear any devout Christian expressing misgivings and doubts about the ministry of Christ or declaring that he was ashamed or afraid because he concealed his identity for a time. Nga naman nga, ni anang mga okasyon, kining three instances in the writings of the gospel, nga nag-i-instruksyonan mo niya ang mga tao, ay mo panugaan sa mga tao, kinsay nag-ayon niyo, kinsay nag-uli sa imong panan inyong pananaw, kinsay nag-ayon niyo mo sa leprosy, ay mo panugilun na inyong nahibawaan nga ako ang misiyas, ito gisultin niya sa mga disciple. Ingo ang padre, concealing one's identity is not in itself a proof that one is either ashamed or afraid. There may be honorable and altogether reasonable grounds for such concealment. Nainumdog ko mga eksawon, 1994, I was professor of theology sa Ethiopian Adventist College dito sa Kuyera, Shia Shemani, sa South Ethiopia, sa Africa. I was tasked by Ethiopian Union Mission and the college to coordinate a nationwide evangelistic meeting for the first time after the fall of communism in Ethiopia in 1991. Sa pag-abot yun, na ay dako kayo nga evangelistic crusade is sponsored by the Seventh-day Adventist Church o ang magawali na ini mao ang associate ministerial secretary sa JIA Conference, si Elder James Zachary, o ang team nga iyang dala, ang medical team nga gikan sa Quiet Hour Echoes, one of the strong uh, evangelical foundation, evangelism foundation of the uh, independent uh, ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church that sponsors major crusades around the world. 
Ug ako ang nahimong national coordinator while holding uh, evangelistic training for all Ethiopian ministers. That was 1994. Nag-coordinate me og health expo, kaya naa may health team. Ug ang among gihimo nga uh, uh, paagi, gimobilize na mo ang tanan ng mga Ethiopian health personnel, nurses, doctors, to join with the team. Kaya mo mang gigamit ang atong New Start nga logo nga kada usa ka litra sa New Start usa ka booth nga naay educational rather health education lectures 2 hours before the meetings each evening. Nalipay ka imi sa unity sa mga Ethiopian health workers ug sa Ethiopian Seventh Day Adventist Church members. Nalipay ka imi ana apan Samtang ongoing na ang crusade sa kada gabi where people flock in the large plaza in the capital city of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. Si Elder Sakari, matagabi i-pray siya na ay mga request for prayer. So he is making a general prayer for those who make request. O kada gabi i-welcome po siya sa mga expression of appreciation for answered prayers. Mga nasakit nga na ayo, etc. Wala mi ga-invite o Dala ang inyong masakiton, wala may anak gahimo. Because we don't do that. You see, we believe as a church that miracles are prerogatives of God. Iyana sa ginoo, dili na pwede nga ang tao nga magwawali, muhagit sa mga tao, dala inyong masakiton diri. Kay amo na siya ngayon, kay wala sa kamot sa tao ang pag-ayo sa masakiton. Ang paghimog milagro sa gingan lang natong faith healing. Apan, ana ang kahigayon na ni Ana sa kamot sa Diyos. So, every time nag mo na, people send in the request. And we are happy nga kada gabi inaapoy mga response kalabot sa uh, mga nangaayo sa sakit. Oh, we rejoice in that. Apan, sa kapanahon ni Ana, I think it was on the second week of the nationwide crusade in Addis Ababa, 1994, may midool ka namo ng health workers, pastor, ang atong head nurse sa atong health expo. Nalipong siya o gidiagnose siya sa doktor nga na siya brain tumor. Wow! That's not small thing, brain tumor. So we were making plans as a group. Gunahuna nami, among we connected ourselves with Dr. Ben Carson, Seventh-day Adventist, one of the world's most renowned brain surgeon in Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, USA. Among the connections yan, na kami diri head nurse, nag-hold me diri o health expo, nag-hold me o evangelistic meeting sa capital city of Ethiopia, apan ang among head nurse na ay brain tumor and she needs to be operated. So tipod ni Dr. Ben Carson, just find a way to bring your patient here, we will take the rest of the situation when the patient lands in America. So we were happy for that. We were trying to raise funds. Apan usaka hapo ni Ana, ni dool ning mga tao, ingon sila, Pastor, I think you guys should need to pray for our member who is having brain tumor. Gidala nila ang pasyente Giyayungan nila sa kining stretcher, gipasakay sa uh, pag-abot dito, gipasakay sa wheelchair, o gidala sa sulod sa opisina sa Ethiopian Union Mission of Seventh-day Adventists. Kay paampuan ka na mo, Elder James Zachary, ako si Pastor Truni Waldisilasi, the President of Ethiopian Union, o si Pastor Hailey, ang another minister. O pat may kaministro ang mihimo og prayer. And I want to tell you, When that happened, grabe ang mata sa mga tao diya sa gawas sa opisina. Nag-atang sila kay nakakita sila nga ang pasinti misulod. Nga? Masakiton. O ang ilang expectation, mugawas to nga maglakaw nga na ayaw na kay giampuan sa ministers. <laughs> that's, that's what they thought. And we did prayer. We did anointing. The patient came out still on the street, sir. Gidala, masakiton siya gihapon. Na ay mga tao ng utana. Manong wala manaayo? Wala din na sila faith healing? 
wala man ayo ang pasyente nga ilang giampuan nganong naa may ilang giampuan sa public nga nagtestify nga nga ayo apan kanang ilang member sa team wala man ayo now that's the second week pagka end of the week na human ang crusade when i was back in the campus of ethiopian adventist college one friday afternoon samtang nagprepare me for the sabbath i was looking in the distance ahead nga Gikan sa karsada, sa highway. May usa ka babae nga disinti nagdala og malita, nag-rule sa iyang uh, luggage diha sa uh, pathway towards our home. And I saw that the face was familiar until she came very close. Ug nailhan ako nga, ang babae man to nga among giampuan. Samtang siya, dun ay brain tumor. Karoon naguyod naman sa iyahang uh, luggage. And we had, of course, a very uh, delightful uh, meeting. She was with us in our home for the weekend, but she made a testimony. Ingom paniya, you know, Pastor, I understand why the Lord did not bring me an instant healing. Nganong wala ko ayuha sa ginoo diha diha, samtang nag-ampu mo o nag-anointing mo sa ako sa nag-atang ang mga tao, wala ko ayuha sa ginoo. Because... God wants to prevent something that may not be very positive, very not may, may not be very good for the ongoing crusade. Kay kun maanunsyo sa kay kung naayo ko diha diha sa inyo kong giampuan. Ang mga tawo magflak na kada adlaw aron pagdala og mga masakiton ug dili na ta kahimo sa atong evangelistic rally nga gihimo nato in the public plaza. But God he healed me Right there after the meetings, and now because of that divine healing, which I still attribute to the prayers you made and the anointing you made, I have committed myself to serve in the missions. Bagong nal, bagong mangog nigikan ang atong duha ka Filipino narcissi, Mr. and Mrs. Rudy ug Alinet Santos, gipul out sila gikan sa Ethiopia in order to be assigned in one of our hospitals in Kenya. Ug nawadan ang nars sa Abunza, usa ka lugar sa South Ethiopia. So pagka nai at pahibalo ang organization nga, they need a head nurse in the clinic in Abunza. This lady who felt nga ang iyang healing sa iyang brain tumor, ang prayer yun. Nang kumit siya sa iyang kaugalingon to serve as a missionary nurse. Now the question is, nganong wala man i-heal sa ginoo, sa panahon sa among direct nga prayer and anointing. Because God saw nga ang amo himuon, dako ang pagkabalda, dako ang commotion because people will be flocking to bring their patients. So, maupo na siya ang basis nga si Jesus nagaingon sa mga sa lipil nga iyang giayo, sa uh, buta nga iyang giayo, o sa iyang mga tinunan. Ayaw mo pagsugilon kanila kinsay nag-ayo kaninyo. Concealing one's identity is not in itself a proof that one is either ashamed or afraid. There may be honorable and altogether reasonable grounds for such concealment. In fact, ang usaka well-known theologian, si Adam Clark, sa iyang komentary mahitungod ni ining pamalibad ni Ginoong Jesus, instruction niya sa iyong mga pasinti nga gipang ayo, naghimo siya comment, matod pa niya, usan ni ka Bible commentator, Adam Clark. The time for Christ's full manifestation was not yet come. And he was not willing to provoke the Jewish malice or the Roman envy by permitting his disciples to announce him as the Savior of a lost world. He chose rather to wait till his resurrection and ascension had, had set this truth in the clearest light and beyond the power of successful contradiction. Wow. The truth is, As a Christian church and a Christian denomination, in the present situation, ang mga Seventh-day Adventists, they are not afraid of being identified as they are with whatever they are doing. That's why you can see that most of our activities are of public uh, nature, meaning most of the things that we do, even our ministry, our ministry, we do not confine it to our own church to our own people. We serve people and we tell people it is sponsored by, sama pananglit sa atong Adventist Development and Relief Agency, 
that is one that is our uh, wing of welfare services. Bisag asa ka kakita karun og calamities that takes place even here in our country. They are right now. Adra is right now in Abra. They are distributing help. When uh, UNIT happened in Mindanao, they were there to help. When Sendong took place, they were there. When Pablo took place, they were there. Why? We are now, we tell the people, we are doing this, not just for ourselves. We are doing this for the people because this is our work. Wala mega kunsil sa among identity nga mo hinungdan nga gadala mi anang mm, health lecture, family life, drug abuse prevention. That's not hiding our message. That's bridging the people from their situation to the actual purpose of the Bible for them. Muna nga akong isgutan ninyo mga kagalaan. So, niya. You see, we believe as a church that the finishing of God's work in this earth and the display of His final powerful proclamation of the gospel to the entire world. Ang pagtapos sa buhat nga iyang gibilin sa, sa church, mauna ang katapusan o pinakadako nga buluhaton sa iyang church diri sa yuta. So, preaching of the gospel, why will we hide our identity? Why will we cover our message with something else? It's all that we do is part of our message. Health, Family, drug education, mental uh, development of mental health and stress relief, all of those are part of our message. So, niya mga kaigalaan. The church, according to one of our known authors in the church, Ellen G. White, sayang libro nga Acts of the Apostles, matod pa niya, the church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of men. It was organized for service and its mission is to carry the gospel to the world. And wherever we go, we tell the people, this is part of the reason for our existence. When we bring healing, that's why our church, we have hospitals. Our church, we have schools. Our church, we have welfare movement. We have Adventist men. We have women's ministry. We have youth ministry. We have all the different services nga sa gobyerno pa, the different agencies of the government that render service, we call that ministries in our church. And we do that all in the name. How would, how would, how do we do that? How would this happen? Nga nung naamana nga klase sa drive, nga nung naamana nga murag priority sa church. Well, akong ihatag sa inyo ang root. Sa Revelation chapter 10, do na is Doon ay vision si John nga nakita niya ang usa ka manulunda si ayang pananaon vision niya akong basahon sa inyo Revelation 10 verse 9 Kini nga manulunda nagunit og basahon nya giingnan si John sa another manulunda duola nang nagunit og basahon pangayo ka niya ang libro nga iyang gigunitan so according to Revelation 10 verse 9 I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take and eat it, and it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Further, verse 10. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. Wow. Unsa may nahitabo? Unsa may kahulugan ini nga pananaon? John was given the vision that there was a message that had been healed for years that people were not able to understand. Mismo gani ang maong ang gitagaan sa maong pananaon kalabot ana ang message which was prophet Daniel, ang apocalyptic prophet of the Old Testament. Nakakita siya sa samang manulunda nga nakita ni John sa Revelation 10. Kay og mubali ka sa Daniel chapter 12, mabasahan nimo nga ang description ni Daniel sa manulunda nga iyang nakita. Pareha gyud sa description ni Juan sa angel nga iyang nakita. Ang diperensya lang nila kay ang nakita ni Daniel sa Daniel 12, manulunda nga nagunit ang iyang walang kamot og basahon nga sinilyuhan, tinakupan. 
ug wala siya kahibaw ug unsay kahulugan ni ini igo lang gipasuwat kaniya ang ka, ang iyang nakita sa pananawon apo wa siya pahibaw a ug unsay kahulugan ini kay giingnan siya sa manulunda gitagal nga ang kahulugan ni anang mensahe a adto na na mahanyag adto na na masabdan sa takda nga panahon sa panahon sa katapusan now John saw the same angel ang nakita ni John dili na siniluhan nga basahon abli na nga basahon ug iyang giingnan siya sa manulunda duula pangayo a ug ihatag na niya nimo apan suguon kaniya nga ipakaon niya kanimo ang maong basahon higala we all know that the meaning of that is the story of the great controversy a bitter sweet experience tam is sa baba mensahe nga tam is sa baba ang pulong sa Dios gisgutan diha tam is paminaon apan bitter kay makadisappointment kay pait man sa tiyan you know what that means for the seventh day adventist it was a portrayal of the experience during the great disappointment and the great disappointment simply means ang mga tao sa 19th century not just in america but also in europe and in other parts of the world some of them a number of them and we have documents regarding them ilang nasabtan ang mensahe nga namatay na lang si Daniel wa niya masabti kay gitagal ang panahon nga masabta na sa panahon nas katapusan and now it was the time of the end na people like William Miller and other preachers they were preaching that Jesus was coming in 1844 diha na nila gibasi human sa ilang masubsub kaayo nga pagtuon bible studies nila faithful bible students believed that the cleansing of the sanctuary revealed in Daniel 8:14 was the cleansing of the earth by fire muna ilang pagsabot they anticipated that Christ would come at the end of the 2300 years according to Daniel 8:14 ug sa prophetic nga computation ilang nasuta nga ang ending sa 2300 years would be in 1844 apan nahitabo mga igsuon nga bisan sa grabe ka sinsero nila bisan sa kadako sa advent awakening nga nahitabo sa Western world, America, Europe, and Latin America. Bisan on sa kadako sa Advent Awakening nga nahitabo. They were disappointed. Why? Jesus did not come as they expected in 1844. So they were bitterly disappointed. Muna'y kahulugan sa kan-a ang basahon, tam isaba ba, apan pait sa tiyan. Meaning, Tun-e ang pulong kay mo manay kaon sa basahon kay mo manay gigamit ni Kristo in relation to the word of God man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God gikaon gi paminaw sa mga tawo misa pagkatamis eh, sa minsay mo balik na Ginoo apan pait sa tiyan kay ang ilang bana-bana ang mubalik wala man they were bitterly disappointed but you remember na ina hitabo o maniana now Before we talk about what happened after the great disappointment, let me bring you back to another great disappointment recorded also in the Bible. Grabe po din nga disappointment. Kanimaw ang disappointment sa mga Hudyo nga nag-expect nga si Kristo ang nakita nilang gamhanan, pakita sa daghang mga milagro sa Din siya siyuta, nag-ayos siya masakiton, nagpakaon siya glinibo ka mga tao, pinaagi lang sa iyong pag-magic sa gamay ng isda o gamay ng tinapay, apan linibo ang nangabusog, o nakakulikta pa, o dosi kabukag na sobra, humaniya gimagic ang duha ka isda o lima ka tinapay. Wow! Grabe nga milagro. They were expecting na ang ilang nakita ng miracle healer. The man who had displayed supernatural power, who did a lot of miracles in his three and a half years of ministry in the Bible lands, they were expecting ng muna ni ang Messiah, mauna ni ang atong gipaabot, mauna ni ang anak ni David ng mupuli sa trono o gumobertro sa gahom sa nagdaog daog kanato ng mao ang Roma. Mona nga pagkahitabo sa ginagalan sa Bible o the triumphal entry na hinumdo mo. Hugyaw ang mga tao. Gihaniga nila og mga panapton og mga dahon sa palmira ang dalan nga gisubay sa asno gagisakyan ni Ginoong Hesus. Samtang sila na nag-awit og nanagsinggit, 
Hosanna to the son of David. They were thinking now that Jesus who displayed power in many occasions, who held many miracles, who silenced the uh, kanang mga accusations sa mga Pharisees, kato nga Jesus, muna to ang Mesias, o mo-occupy na siya sa throne. But they were very bitterly disappointed because Christ did not sit on the throne of David. He was nailed on the cross. Sumatod pa sa mga tinunan sa dihang si Kristo na lansang nasa cross. Luke 24, 21. We were hoping that it was He who was going to redeem Israel. Wow! But did He? Ilang nakita. Ang ilang gi-expect nga mulingkod sa truno ni David sa Jerusalem. Ilang gihipos ang patay nga lawas ni ini o gilubong dito sa lubnganan ni Joseph of Arimathea. Sa Acts 1 verse 7, nag-explain si Jesus sa mga katauhan. Okay. Nahinumdum mo nga, when Christ was resurrected, according to Luke chapter 24, when He was resurrected, and the book of Acts in chapter 1, kaya usara man na ka-author, si, si Luke raman ang nag sa Acts, si Luke po ang nag sa Luke, siya ang nagsugilon sa pagkabanhaw. And he was this, the one who said nga, when Christ was resurrected on a Sunday morning, he stayed with the disciples for 40 more days. O sa kanang 40 days nga nag-ipon siya, uban kanila, mihatag siya og final nga instruction before siya ni ascend pa ingon sa langit. Apan sometimes sila nag-hisgot, uban ni Jesus, ingon si Jesus kanila, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in His authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Ang iyahang pulong nagpasidaan sa mga tinunaan, ng nagpabilin ng matinudanon kaniya, ang mga hudiyo ng mituo kaniya, ang mga converts ni Jesus when He died. Iyang ipasidaan. May ibilin ko sa inyo ng dakong buluhatun. Apan ako nang ibilin kaninyo o uban ang gahom gikan sa langit, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit will come upon you. So narikod mga kaigsoonan sa Acts 1, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Munang, mabasa na to, according to Acts chapter 1, verse 9 and forward, when he was raised to heaven, before he was lifted by the clouds, gilitok niya ang pulong nga atong nahibawaan nga ginganlan og the great gospel commission ang Matthew 28:18 to 20 sa dihang miingon siya go into all the world and teach all nations what i have commanded you mo ni ginganlan ato great commission ang sugo sa Dios gikan sa pulong ni Kristo apan nahitabo human sila na disappointed kay ang ilang expectation the king was the one they were trying to usher into the throne in Jerusalem. Sa royal entry niya sa Jerusalem. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to the son of uh, the, the king of Israel. Apan na disappointed sila. Apan human sa ilang disappointment, gitagaan sila di ay sa Diyos o misyon. Ang akong gibuhat, ipahibaw ninyo sa tibuok kalibutan. Umadto kamo sa tanang kanasuran. O Acts 2 verse 41, nag-ingon ang record. Sa dihang nagsugod nagwali ang mga disciples, then those who gladly received His word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And if you read the first few chapters of the book of Acts, you can see how rapid God's church grew because of the proclamation of the gospel nga gisugo sa ni Kristo ang mga tinunan. Now, why do I give you that story? Because then the word of God, according to Acts chapter 6 verse 7, the word of God spread and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the, many of the press were obedient to the faith. Nahinumdum ta. Nga naapod sa Matthew 24, 28 verse 19, kana ang maong sugo. The words Christ uttered to the disciples before He rose up to heaven. He ascended to heaven. 
Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. So tagaan na ito ang comparison. Ang disappointment sa believers ni Christ when he was nailed on the cross. The disciples. Number one, the disciples believed Christ was going to restore the kingdom. All of them. That's why they were what we call converted. Nahimo silang followers ni Christ. Because they believed Christ was going to restore the kingdom. Now, the disciples who believed that he was going to restore the kingdom were bitterly disappointed when Christ was crucified. Ang ilang expectation, mulingkod na sa truno, apan ilansang hinoon sa krus. Ang ilang expectation, musulob na sa korona ni David, apan gikoronahan hinoon o tunukun. Ang ilang expectation, maglibot na ang mga gwardiya kaniya, apan gilibutan hinoon siya sa mga gwardiya nga mituslok si Enlawas o milansang kaniya sa cross. So that's the disappointment of the disciples. They were amazed though. Kay human siya gilubong ni Anang Birni sa hapon, sa buntag sa iyo sa Domingo, he was resurrected. And then, after the resurrection, Christ stayed with them according to Luke, In the book of Acts and the book of Luke, chapter 24, he stayed with them for another 40 days. And they accepted Christ's commission to proclaim the gospel to the world. So, the world was evangelized by the disciples. Kaysa dayon na niyang kayab paingon sa langit, miingon man siya sa pulungan, I, if I be lifted up from this world, will draw all men to myself. Who will draw men to himself? Of course, he, through the preaching of of the disciples. What about us? The disciples of the last days, the people who are living in our present time, after the great disappointment, the great, the, the, the disciples believed Christ was going to restore the kingdom. Muna ilang gihuna huna, mubalik na si Kristo, thy kingdom come, nga dugay na kain atong gipangadji sa our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Ilang gituhan, mubalik na Diyos Kristo, iyan ang i-establishan ang iyang kingdom. And they were also bitterly disappointed because Christ did not return at the time they expected Him. But they were amazed when they discovered that they were living in the judgment hour. And finally, they accepted Christ's commission to proclaim the gospel to the world. How did we know that? Kay human mga kaigsuunan, sa great disappointment, God gave them a very, very big appointment. Human sa ilang daku ng pagkabalo. Kay wa man mabalik, wa man muabot ang ilang gipaabot. Gitagaan hinoon sila sa Diyos o sa katahas. Gitudluan sila o gisugo sila o sa kabuluhatun. Sama sa gihimo ni Jesus sa mga tinunan. You go into all the world and teach all nations what I have commanded you. God brings victory out of defeat. Nakunahuna ang mga tinunan nga. Wa na. Natunaw na, nalupig na, nahunong na ang ipasiugdahan ni Kristo. They were wrong. Christ left them not as a defeated group. But Christ gave them power. Hangtod ka ron ang tahas gihatag sa Diyos sa church. The followers, the believers, and the disciples of Christ who preach the gospel, we are still given the task because we live in the last days and we are the church in the last days. God brings triumph out of tragedy. He brings a great appointment after the great disappointment. Muna mabasa ni mo, human yun sa pagkao ni Juan sa basahon, diha sa kamot sa manulunda. Nga may ingon ka niya, okay, I'll give it to you. When you have it, kan a ang basahon. Tam is kinis imong ba ba daw dugos, apan pa it kinis imong tiyan. Meaning, study the prophecies that has been concealed for years. The time has not yet come for that, but now is the time that it should be known around the world. Muna nga, sa Revelation 10.11, immediately, Human siya mubati sa kapait sa iyang gikaon nga tam isa ba ba. Immediately, gilitok ang pulong sa Revelation 10.11. And he said to me, you must prophesy again 
about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Makita ninyo. Makaingon mo. Grabe ang paralel, no? Gisugo sa Diyos ang mga tinunan nga iwali ang maing balita sa tibo o kalibutan. Human sila na disappointed. Abi nilag mauna apan ang ilang gituuhan lahi sa ilang nakita. But after they were disappointed, after the great disappointment, they were given the appointment to Christianize the world. And the disciples successfully did that. But before Jesus comes, in the last days, ang disciples of the last days will be disappointed again, just like the disciples during the time when Christ was here, they were disappointed again. And after the great disappointment, God gave them a very important appointment. Inyong dalhon ang pulong sa Diyos, ngagtos daghang katawahan. Sa tanang kanasuran, sa tanang pinulungan, sa tanang kaharian. And that's exactly what the church is doing since the time of the great disappointment. Preachers all over the world bring the word of God. And I tell you, there is a remarkable growth. Matthew 24:14, Sumpay gihapon eh, sa Great Commission. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Munang, sa Seventh-day Adventist Church, we believe this is done. When the church proclaims the last warning message, the three angels' message of Revelation 14, to all the world, kay simbolical manang three angels, messengers mana, mga magwawali mana, ang meaning ni Ana, God's people who had been disappointed, God's people who were who thought that the events that has transpired were wrong. Ah, gitagaan silang appointment. Gihatag kanila sa Diyos ang sugo, iwali ninyo ang pulong, o mulukop ka mo sa kalibutan. And exactly that is what happened. Revelation 14 verse 6, morning first angel's message, which I already expanded to you partly in the past. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. These prophecies are being fulfilled today in God's last day church. That's why I told you, wala mi nagcover sa gospel samtang nagdala mi og health lecture. Wala mi nagconceal sa among sa doctrine sa Bible samtang nagdala mi og family life lectures. Wala mi nagtabon sa actual nga buluhaton sa Ginoo samtang nagtudlo mi sa kababayen-an sa pagdumala sa ilang mga puloy-anan. They are all part, integral part of the gospel which are also essential in the preparation of the people of the world so that they will be prepared for the coming of Christ. And we don't cover ourselves. We don't deny ourselves either. You can see mga kaigsuonan sa pagkakaron Grabe man ang inyong nakita. Come with me. Ako mong ipakita sa pipila lamang ka-aspek sa buhat sa church. In the world today. After the fall of communism in November 1989, the Eastern Bloc, known as the Communist Bloc in Europe, ang gingalag Communist Bloc sa Europa, nga dilig yun masulod sa Ebanghilyo prior to the fall of communism in 1989, Kana nga grupo, ang muso dito nga mga misyonaris pa uliun. I-deport ang mga missionary trucks and magazines nga maabot sa post office. Pang sunugo ni dito sa mga post offices sa Russia. Sa kanang gingalag, Union of Soviet Socialist Rep- Republic. Daghan man na nga mga nasod. Appeal ang part of the nations in Europe. Sama sa Poland, sa Hungary, Yugoslavia, o Romania, Albania, etc. But I want to tell you, Kana nga mga nasod nga lisod kayo sudlon sa mensahe kani adto kay matud pa sa political terminology covered with the iron curtain or covered with a bamboo curtain man ambot pasabot ug dunay musuri ma mabungi na lang kay iron curtain god ug dunay musuri masamad kay bamboo curtain god gidili ang pagdaas sa mga misyonary gidili ang pagwali for so many years walay winalihay kanang mga lugara 
Upon at the full of communism in 1989, grabi ang pag-abli. Pag-declare yun ni Michael Gorbachev that USSR has collapsed and now they have a... They have, there were two words used, the glasnost and perestroika, nga ang iyang kahulugan, abli na ang Russia, abli sa reforms, abli sa philosophy, abli sa education, abli sa trade, abli sa education, muna nga nisod ang ibang hilyo. One of our great preachers of this church, Elder Mark Finley, has targeted a number of countries in the former communist bloc. He preached in Poland, He preached in Hungary. He preached in Romania. He preached in Yugoslavia. He preached even in Russia. Abi ninyo, di in siya nagwali. Did to you mismo sa Kremlin. That's the parliament building, the capital of the government of Russia during the reign of communist government. Wow! Grabe ang nahitabo. Ang winalihay. Albania, grabe man eh. Binautismuhay all over. Mongolia, a very strong uh, lisud kayo sudlon. China mismo, the strongest communist country in Asia. Grabe, mo na'y kinadakhanan o Christians ka nun. Labi na yun Adventist Christians, ang China. Let me take you to a remote area in the Philippines. Dini sa ato mismo. Gisud sa Adventist World Radio. Ang mga nitibo sa bukid, ang mga dato sa mga syudad, gipang sulod. Last year lang makaiksunan for your information as a result of our Hope Channel evangelistic outreach. Kini nga itong sibihan karon ron. Ngingilan na itong Hope Channel. Sa pagkakaroon na ay last year lang, 2021, there were 80,000 people who were baptized into the church. Added into the almost 1 million members of the church in Mindanao alone. Now we have more than... Uh, Almost 1.5 million, million in the Philippines. But the church continues to grow. Slovakia, na adito ang AWR, Adventist World Radio. All over the world na ang uh, Hope Channel. Na sa Guam. All over. There are thousands of Seventh-day Adventist mission pioneers who are penetrating the remotest areas of the gospel. And we do not conceal ourselves. We tell them. It is in our name, Seventh-day Adventist. We keep the Sabbath and we believe in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Muna mga kaigsunan, kung makadungog mong mga tao nga nag-ingon, deceivers mana sila, kaya gitabuna ng ilang ibanghilyo, gitabuna ng ilang wali sa maubang lecture, aron mo attract sa mga tao na we are not deceiving. We are bringing the holistic gospel. And I want to tell you, we are proud to do that. And every single Seventh-day Adventist around the world is proud that they are part of the Gospel Commission. We ask people to study the Word and we baptize those who accept Christ as their Savior and they become members of God's last day church. Tonight, I want to tell you, we have already refuted three accusations. First, Seventh-day Adventists are a cult. We are not. Two, Seventh-day Adventists are legalists. We are not. Three, Seventh-day Adventists are deceivers. We don't deceive people. We tell the people the truth and we are proud to do that. May I invite you now to please bow your heads as we pray. Gamahanan namo ang Diyos, magagagahom namo ang amahan. Daku kayong among kalipay ng anining kagabhiun. Another objection is being refuted. Some people are thinking that we are not very honest. Now we have told them, we bring to them with all honesty what we believe as the whole gospel. Ang kinatibukan sa minsahe nga ang nilang mahibawan, magripurma sa ilang pamilya, magtudlo kanila sa mayang pamatasan, magpahinumdum sa katalagman sa mga bisyos kinabuhi, magligon sa mga panimalay, o kinintanan, dili sa pagtabon sa kamatuuran, kundili tipik sa kamatuuran. Sa pinasay, among gidaladeha kanimo ang mga taong nagpakitag interes pagpatilinghog sa imong pulong. Sila mao ang imo mga karniro nakadungog sa imong tingog. Padayuna sila sa pagpasabot sa kamatuuran. Giampo sa mnamo ni Nintaknaa sa makausapa ang among mga kahigalaan nga na mga balatian. Amahan, doawa sila sa ilang mga dapit. Among ginaampo ang mga batanon nga 
Sugod ni ining si Mana, sunod si Mana, o ni ining umalabot nga pipila ka adlaw. Magsugod na sa face-to-face -face classes. Usaka hitabo nga mo break sa pandemic restrictions sulod sa milabay nga duha katuig. Lord, panalip di intaw ng among kabataan nga dili sila mahiagom sa hulga sa uban nga mutaas na sab ang COVID cases tungod sa face-to-face -face classes. Hinaot nga ang imong special protection maanas imong kaanakan. Panlabos na nan giyahe ang imong iglesia nga muwali sila sa imong mensahe nga makapaandam sa katawhan nga mahimo silang lumulupyo sa langit. Salamat sa imong pagtubag, among gidala kanimo ang kinasingkasing pagampo sa ngala ni Hesus. Amen.